we got ourselves another dev blog here to give us more information on Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon. Now, in my typical fashion, guys, just kind of letting you know up front, there is nothing kind of earth shattering in this article. If you don't want to know anything about the Zhao Ming's lore, my talking is about some supposed mechanics, or me talking about the fact that they mentioned the Jade Dragon, you're really okay to shut the video down. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. There's nothing uh, cool about the new siege mechanics, which have been hinted about uh, many months ago or anything like that. In fact, to be totally honest, that's what I'm really looking forward to seeing here. And the more we get of these lore blogs, while it is cool, I'm ready to see some mechanics. I'm ready to see some some Cathay in action. So if that's all you wanted to know, um, you are, like I said before, you're free to shut the video down. But please, before you do, don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. I can't tell you how much those things help me. And if you have not yet pre-ordered Total War Warhammer 3, you can do so using the link in my description. You can uh, purchase... Total War Warhammer 3 through the Nexus link and it will give you a Steam key and you'll get it directly from the developers. There's no like shady third person action or anything like that going on. But for those that want to get into the lore of Zhao Ming the Iron Dragon, stay tuned because let's have some fun here. And the lore from what we what we are seeing here is nothing crazy just yet. We get a little semblance of the kind of character he is. We get definitely some hints more over of the other dragons. This article mentions the Dra the Jade Dragon. Uh, we now have the Storm Dragon, the Iron Dragon, and the Jade Dragon. The, the Jade Dragon was also hinted a little bit in uh, Miao Ying's portion as well. So we're going to go through just like we did with um, Miao Ying. We're going to read the question. I'm going to read the response, and we'll kind of have like a, uh, a response to that. So... We've already been introduced to the Storm Dragon to the north. What makes the Iron Dragon in the west different? And remember, this is from Andy Hall, uh, a former author of, uh, not Total War Warhammer, of Warhammer lore. So you know he's kind of, uh, he's well-versed. Location is the most obvious. While Miao Ying defends the Great Bastion towards the roof of the world, Zhao Ming rules the western provinces and the mighty city of Shenyang, seen as a gateway to the west or east if you're coming the other way. Many trade caravans leave Cathay from Zhao's domain, and should tr they be successful, he will reap the wealth and prestige, which is particularly important to the Iron Dragon as he is not as beloved by his father as his older sister, although rumors say the Moon Empress has a soft spot for her son. So, looking at this here, and I apologize, my allergies are acting up, the weather is changing in Southern California, so I can barely breathe, but... Let's take a look at this. There, there's some big things here. For one, location is the most obvious. So we get, again, this hint, this this really big semblance, this, this importance towards the cardinal directions, right? In our last video, we talked about the north, the west, the south, and the east. East being the color of... Uh, jade of of green um aligned with the azure dragon so boom there we go we're, we're, we're going to see that a little bit more in the next in the next paragraph here south being the vermilion bird and we already saw the vermilion war bird in the uh, kong ming lanterns and that is of the south and the color is red so west is white the uh, white tiger and it is associated with metal so we have the iron dragon of the west colored white so and the uh, storm dragon of the north colored black so things are, are kind of really looking to shape up in that whole chinese mythological cardinal direction importance of the, the chinese four symbols and another big thing here is should uh many trade caravans leave Cathay for Zhao's domain and should they be successful he will reap the wealth and prestige and remember one of the mechanics I had talked about was the possibility of a grand caravan expedition that you can send out as Zhao Ming that is very similar to the monster expeditions from Total War Troy you send this grand caravan out it encounters a number of dilemmas, and based on how you answer and deal with those dilemmas, uh, it will kind of net you a certain level of wealth and prestige, whatever that means. There's another fun little thing I'll talk about with uh, Purified Warpstone that I had kind of um, theorized during my last, uh, what the hell is it called, uh, live stream, but we'll go into that in just a little bit. But here we have uh, Zhao Ming himself, looking just uh, extra hog wild right there. So while Miao Ying is facing off against the hordes of chaos in the wastes, the Iron Dragon's neighbors are a varied collection of greenskins, ogres, hmm, skaven, and more besides. How does he deal with these disparate, uh, disparate factions? Well, he starts off his campaign in a bit of a pickle, to be honest. The Skaven in the desert are acting up, and there are even rumors of rebellion. Could the two be connected? It's Skaven, of course it is. 
Even so, he is a dragon, a force to be reckoned with, and commands an impressive following. The cabals of metal wizards are welcomed within his realm, much to the irritation of the Jade Dragon, who sees the encouragement of sorcerous organizations outside of the Celestial Court as dangerous to the Empire. These sorcerers help the Iron Dragon in his experiments, and many magical weapons and armor are forged in the Dragon's cities. So, <clears throat> again, we get this mentioning here of the Jade Dragon. And in my initial kind of conversation about the, what, what a sibling to the East, son or a uh, um, brother or a sister, would probably be that the individual would, again, be allied with green because that's where the coastline is and that's where the ships are they call it the jade fleet and green and it's uh, the east is also associated with wood so that would make a lot of sense wood fleet green blah 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 but i also supposed that the jade dragon whoever that was would be someone who would be very not tactical because that, that as soon as i think, think tactical i think of a guy in like military cosplay uh, i think of like Someone who is strategic, someone who would be like Kong Ming, who would be like Zhuge Liang, who would be an individual that is thinking about the bigger picture. So his kind of irritation at a cabal of metal wizards welcome within his realm kind of fits that overall role. Like he's thinking strategically, hey, you know, this might actually compromise us here and there. So it, it would be pretty interesting to see how that plays out. And as we find out more about the Jade Dragon and what I would assume would be the Vermilion Dragon to the south or the, the Red Dragon to the south, whatever it is, um, I would, would be interested to see if one of them is like kind of like the head of the quote-unquote secret police or, or the intelligence agency because that, that, that I think kind of adds another layer to the dynamic between these what I'm assuming is for brothers and sisters because we get a little part later that says they're brothers and sisters. But... And Cabals of metal, metal Wizards maybe tells me that uh, Zhao Ming might have some sort of innate bonus towards recruiting any kind of caster. You know, like, oh, plus three recruitment rank when recruiting casters that are alchemists or maybe metallurgists or, like, I'm saying metallurgists instead of metal wizards because I don't know if uh, Cathay will have, you know, a Cathayan wizard in parenthetical notation, metal. Or Cathayan Wizard, Yin, Cathayan Wizard, Yang. So I wonder if he'll get some sort of bonuses to recruiting, say, metal or alchemy or metal or just something of the sort. And probably get some sort of bonuses when it comes to forging things, because as we'll read on more, he has a little bit more going with that. But talking of which, can you tell us more about Shang Yang? It is the largest city in the West, a bustling metropolis full of foreign traders, despite its location in the middle of the Warpstone Desert. At times, it has come under threat from the armies of the Hobgoblins or Ogre Raiders, again, two things, big things, from the Mountains of Morn, but has fended them off due to the Iron Dragon's formidable presence. Over the last few centuries, Shang Yang has become the end of a thread connecting Cathay to the Old World, and Astalians, Tilians, and Empire Travelers and Ambassadors all have permanent quarters within the city. It also draws the aforementioned cabals, who use the city as a base for their expeditions into the desert. Some never return. Others come back loaded with exotic ores that end up in the forges, with the Iron Dragon as enthusiastic as any of the other alchemists to begin experimenting. So, <clears throat> maybe he has some sort of forge or alchemy lab mechanic, kind of similar to the way that Scryer has something like that, where he can experiment with some ores that he finds in the desert that maybe allow him to give bonuses that are completely different than the other quote unquote factions of the uh, Cathayans that allow him to say, oh, hey, you know, these, uh, I believe they call their their equivalent of Warplock Giselles crane gunners. We, we saw that picture that has these guys basically using a Giselle style um, rifle. Maybe you can imbue them with some sort of special warp stone. And before we continue, this is something that I forgot to add in, and I'm adding it after the fact, so it looks hodgepodge as shit. But still, um, one thing that is worth noting is in the Warhammer RPG 2nd Edition, there's this bit about the uh, Magister Alchemists of the Golden Order of the Empire. And it talks about how these guys, essentially, they, they travel across the entire uh, Warhammer world, right, to Nehekara, so on and so forth. But here's a little interesting tidbit. In more recent decades, the Magister Alchemists of the Golden Order have begun traveling further and further, some say even to distant Cathay, seeking any and all knowledge concerning alchemy, metallurgy, and medicine. So this kind of reaffirms that these metallurgists, these, these, these um, 
members of the Golden Order are traveling to Cathay. And it's kind of cool to see this come full circle into the new lore for Zhao Ming. But let's uh, keep going now. Let's jump into this next part so I can talk about my purified warpstone harebrain theory. So the Iron Dragon is also an accomplished alchemist and blacksmith. Very much so. He is a skilled artist. <laughs> he is as skilled an artisan as those drawn to him since he has a has had a dragon's lifespan to perfect such expertise and research the mysteries of arcane metallurgy. The strange elements found in the Warpstone Desert have only deepened Zhao's fascination and understanding of alchemy, but have also led to some unfair accusations from his siblings. So, what if there was a mechanic, and th this was something I kind of speculated earlier, we know Warpstone to be corrupted, right? It, 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 anyone who spends too much time around it, the Skaven all huff it in droves, it, it kind of like makes you a little brain addled. Well, what if he kind of perfected some sort of process to purify it? And by purifying it so much, it has made him a little, you know, batshit insane. But, but it'd be interesting if his faction somehow had a way to purify Warpstone that would result in some sort of either unit buff, either a currency, whatever it is. And someone actually responded to that, that notion in the stream saying, yeah, what if the purified Warpstone is Jade? Since it retains the green look of Warpstone, but no longer has the taint of chaos upon it. And I'm like, oh man, that's a really cool idea to bring Jade, which is already so central to um, Chinese history and mythology, and wrap it into Total War Warhammer, which already seems to have a huge bearance on the eastern portion of the uh, nation, or at least we think. But I really like that idea, that sentiment. It'd be cool if they, it'd be cool if they watched this video and we just went with it. You know, I mean, uh, it'd, be, it'd be great for all of us, I think. But <laughs> moving on. Yes, what are these rumors? His brothers and sisters perpetuate that his centuries in the Warpstone Desert have affected his mind. But this is pure slander, I say. They are dragons, cold-blooded and detached from the mortals they rule, where the Iron Dragons will share a jape or even a drink with his followers. Such mortal behavior inspires loyalty within his legions, but makes him stand apart from his kin. Him. They don't understand it and so smear him. Although maybe we can't fully rule out the effects of living so close to the Great Ma. In any, clay, in any case, if his siblings look upon him with suspicion, the Moon Empress is very fond of her son and will shield him from ire when the family assembles. Uh, assemblies become less than harmonic. And there's that harmony jab again. So, again, not a whole ton divulged from this blog post. We do get Another rambling here, so we get, not rambling, we get another little uh, mentioning here of the Great Maw. We see the Ogre Raiders mentioned here, that there's Ogres to his west. So, I don't know, I don't think this is like a heavy-handed hint. I think that Creative Assembly is like, yeah, I think that they get that it's probably going to be Ogres as the uh, pre-order race. Um, it could very well still be Chaos Dwarfs. It could also be a faction that none of us have ever heard of. But... I think Ogres is still a really strong contender. Um, I think it's the front-running contender for pre-order race for Total War Warhammer 3. Um, also, the mentioning of Hobgoblins was pretty cool. And I don't know if that's just going to be in happenstance and, and like, hey, yeah, you know, the Hobgoblins were around there. If the Hobgoblins will be rolled into a Chaos Dwarf route roster as possible slave slash expendable unit um, options, or if... The Hobgoblin Conate would get its own faction. I would imagine something of the sort of... It, we could probably envision it as Chaos Dwarfs do get expendable Hobgoblins, and a Hobgoblin Conate faction would be a NPC mashup faction of Greenskins and Hobgoblins from the Chaos Dwarf roster. I bet you'd probably be envisioned like that until they actually, if they decide to roll out a full-fledged uh, race pack for them, but I think it's kind of doubtful compared to the options for Dogs of War, Tillians, Estallians, uh, Ogres, uh, Chaos Dwarfs, so on and so forth. But again, guys, nothing earth shattering here. I'm still really waiting for more information on um, what's it called? The sieges or any mechanics, any gameplay. I would like to see one of those roster reveals or the Life Within Cathay type videos they usually do where they kind of swing more into the Cathay inside of the conflict between Cathay and Zinch. And still, we haven't heard anything about a Zinch roster reveal, any more news on Zinch, um, who that actual, uh, what's it called, who the actual legendary lord is. I, I would assume Kairos the Fate Weaver, Fate Weaver, so on and so forth. But as we get more information, I will absolutely be covering it here for you guys. 
Um, be on the lookout for that. I'll also be covering some more information for uh, Crusader Kings 3 if you're still playing along, some more Bannerlord action and other goodies with Warhammer, just some other kind of fun videos that I'm kind of come up with. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one. Don't forget to do like, comment, subscribe, all that fun action, but take care.